can keep this YouTube video private and create a new YouTube account to put it in at UCSD Biomedical Library. This is where I put my sleeping bags at, okay? I also have some other property hidden close by out of sight. If I come home on any date, including today's date, and it's gone, it'll be done in order to psychologically motivate me to call the police so they can make a police report and or an incident report about my hiking situation. Now, they came down up in here two nights ago, and I believe one of them was also up in here last night. I am an extremely experienced camper and hiker. I know the sounds of a raccoon, a coyote, literally, literally, a rat. Literally, see, because what you got to do is understand this when you're sleeping in a tent, you become familiar with the foot, the foot movements, the pacing of like, like when a rat's walking. Okay, on, on these kinds of leaves right here, listen, listen, you hear those leaves right there? Okay, these are leaves crunching. When a rat runs across those leaves, you get to understand the type of noises that rats makes. Even when they get into a bunch of dead uh, trees, uh, uh, branches of um, of a dead tree that fell, okay, and their and their leaves, like for instance these over here, okay. Understand, I've been camping for so long, I have literally become accustomed to the um the breath of a raccoon's walking, of a coyote's walking, of a rat's walking, of a raccoon's walking, and a human being's. And I guarantee to you this right now, fellow American citizens, they came down up in here two nights ago and last night. Last night I heard them and I extremely sensed them, okay? And two nights ago. And I recently discovered a pathway that they used to get up in here. That way they could come and go extremely fast. By the time I would have got outside the tent, I would have not been able to put a flashlight on their face. Absolutely. Now, could that have also been done to psychologically bait me to make a video about it so the police can say Miss Williams is putting herself in dangerous situations because she's camping and won't get out of it. She's homeless but won't get out of it. And we believe it's because of a mental illness. And let me tell you another thing, fellow American citizens. The San Diego government has propped up a bunch of illegal legal appearing um, schemes to make it appear that anybody that goes up against their government for for anything that they might go after uh, go after them for or a business that they might try to be uh, that they might want to protect you know lawsuits and stuff the point being is what in fact this is happening in every state and city in the United States absolutely it's connected to gang stalking what they're doing is taking whistleblowers Anybody that creates any kind of problems for the system of any city, town, or state government, you know what they're doing? They're calling them mentally ill. Psychiatric detention has always been, okay, a mechanism that has been used by despotic governments. Make no mistake about it. Google it. And if you don't think that psychiatric detention is not connected to gang stalking, Google that. Google how they create homelessness of a target. Google that. Now, you can also definitely Google the police in gang stalking, judges in gang stalking, doctors in gang stalking, lawyers in gang stalking, which includes, but not limited to, prosecutors. Dan Goldsmith is such a criminal, it's pathetic. It's pathetic. He's been, he's been sued for by the California Family Association. Google that. And Jan Goldsmith and his little skanky ass. And also Curtis Webb, who's in the San Diego DA's office. He's all over the internet being exposed for being directly connected to a UC Davis doctor, okay, who raped a woman, had her gang stalked when she got pregnant because of the rape. She had the kid then try to sue for, um, for compensation, so then he had her gang raped, and then Curtis Webb was used to try uh, to was used his office was used in order to use CPS to take the child away. Absolutely, and she's all over the internet exposing how gang stalking is directly connected to human trafficking. I started exposing this, and you wouldn't believe the things that have happened to me since then. Now, so that's just a tidbit for you, ladies and gentlemen. They came up in here two nights ago. Was it done to psychologically motivate me to make a tweet about it? Because they know I tweet everything. Predictions concerning what might happen to me as a result of being a victim of this crime. And then if they do what I predict, I expose that. And the entrance they used to get here. Let me just put it to you this way. The area that I'm at right now, the only way that you could approach my tent after dark, and they waited until after dark, the only way that you could do that, okay, 
is you would make so much noise it would give just approaching the entrance of the area would make so much noise that would give me enough time to unlock the t if I decided to do so would be to unlock the tent okay and then get a flashlight out right away that way I'd be able to see their faces okay unless they're wearing masks okay but the point being is that hold on so what they did was they came down up in here probably the day before yesterday during the day and cleared up cleared out a pathway from behind me I just noticed it just now and made a video about it keep this video private they'll even use my statements in this video to say I'm crazy and try to make me a, a ward of the state put me in a syndicated run group home through pro probate control and that is another environment where the human trafficking takes place at and if you don't believe that they're not raping women in homes go to YouTube and type in uh, stalking in San Antonio it used to be titled um, stalk drugged and raped is it happening here in San Antonio that YouTube video shows two women being on a news broadcast being raped in their own homes because of gang stalking and there's a blog online that was written by I'm not gonna go into that but just trust me on this there's a blog online literally showing that they entered my home when I was sleeping in Michigan turned on all the lights and closed and opened up all the doors the point I'm trying to make is right now is this as a result of being a victim of gang stalking I've been made homeless by them and that's all over the internet that that, that, that that is one of their main methodologies they do to a target it's done for exploitation it's why the police won't make a police report about you being gang stalked but will make a police report that you're mentally ill because the mental illness diagnosis is where their syndicated doctors are connected to the county mental health psychiatry teams that work with San Diego homeless rescue mission oh my god they are so criminal it's pathetic because think about this they know where a targets gonna run to after they made the target homeless Homeless, homeless shelters, social services, uh, even social security. They know where targets, it's organized crime in the system at every level, federal, state, and local, and they are networked together. It's a syndicate, okay? And they're using their employment descriptions to achieve their objectives. How do you think they're taking legal syndicated probate control of people? People on disability, the elderly, uh, uh, parents of disabled children, okay? Parents of disabled adult children. Uh, uh, people that are, they're now targeting people that got just regular pensions uh, you know pensions from the city state uh, teamsters whatever anybody that they deem is vulnerable to where they can do it and not have a lot of problems with their family members they're doing it to because they're housing these people in group homes 7 to 11 clients per home then the mortgage is paid off on an accelerated rate and then they flip the property and if you don't think banks aren't involved in this shit think again absolutely so what they're doing is treating people as straw people now they can take me off of social security do this and then continue the criminal motivations get syndicated probate control of me and then reapply for it in my name absolutely did they do what they did two nights ago coming up in here and I think they were up in here last night after dark too because I sensed it and I heard it okay understand I've been camping for so long when you're in a tent lying down you're you're um your head is practically directly on the ground so when you hear animals moving around you you can you know the difference between the paces that a raccoon makes that uh that a coyote makes that a rat makes okay whatever and you know when you hear a human walking and when you hear a human walking and then stopping absolutely absolutely and why did they create an area where they can easily run in and out from and because they did not want to give they did not want to enter uh, enter which they would also use as the exit uh, concerning like like if, if, if they would have used all these other areas to get in here they would have had to use them to get out so what they did was they came up in here when I was gone during the day and created a new one where they can fly right in fly right out that would have bought them time to be able to escape if they saw if they if they if they heard me attempting to get out of the tent okay flashlight face camera understand okay all right, I gotta go keep this video private today's date is April 1st 2015 so if I come back here and if you don't think see because the police gotta have a normal apparent reason to know where you're at so they can make the police reports and the incident reports that are used to, to eventually take syndicated probate control. Miss Williams has been homeless now for four years. She won't get out of it. And they have set up <coughs> their mechanisms, their legal mechanisms, the legal uh, laws and statutes and acts and shit that they, they literally did this intentionally. 
San Diego County government did. What they did was they literally created government penal codes, statutes, civil codes that if a person is homeless and won't attempt to get out of it, then they're, then they're either dealing with a drug addiction, alcoholism, or a mental illness. And so, therefore, they will use that. They'll, they'll start documenting it per the, uh, pertaining to the person's social security number. And they'll keep a record of it. And then they, de all depending on wh how a person can be used. Can they be used as a straw person for the prison industrial complex where these privately owned detention centers receive federal funds per inmate? Use a syndicated cop, stage an event, boom, he's arrested, put in jail. Money is applied for in his name. Same concept. Absolutely. Absolutely. They're literally just making average people homeless so they can use the homelessness and then stage an, uh, events. And the target knows it's because of gang stalking because they creatively let the target know it's because of gang stalking. Go to YouTube and type in learning disabled woman exposes flat out evidence of gang stalking. Learning disabled woman catches gang stalking. Learning disabled woman exposes evidence of gang stalking. Just Google it on YouTube and you'll see you'll see the evidence. In fact, just go to Google and type in uh, uh, learning disabled woman being gang stalked in San Diego. You'll run across many blogs and hundreds of YouTube videos and a lot of them got evidence in them. Now, they will creatively let you know that an assault that's taking place towards you, a robbery or whatever, is happening because of gang stalking as a result of specific things they'll say or do that you've been sensitized to. They're doing that to Bonnie right now in Oceanside. Go to, go to YouTube and type in Bonnie Oceanside California gang stalking. They've sensitized her to the color red and then are constantly introducing it around her, concerning her along all of her routes while they're trying to make her appear crazy because of it. Color harassment and sensitization is all over the internet. It's a technique of gang stalking. So just re thoroughly research what sensitization methods is. The point being is that they ho mentally harass the target every day by propping people up along the target's route on a daily basis in order to mentally remind them that they're a victim of a crime by constantly repeating what they've been sensitized to. And they're just using mostly, I'd say at least 92% of them are mostly just duped people that they're using through churches, charities, homeless shelters, domestic violence shelters, public workers, utility company personnel, anybody and everybody they can use. It's at the federal and state and local level where this is being expedited at. Okay. Now, as a result of the constantly being reminded that they're a victim of the crime, the, the target is kept in a constant neural mental loop because they're constantly intentionally being reminded about it everywhere they go every day in one form or another. Absolutely. So research sensitization methods extensively and you'll see I'm telling you the truth. Now, this is done to psychologically mentally harass the target, to make them think this is nothing but bullshit, I gotta put up with this shit every damn day, everywhere I go. It's done to provoke a target. Okay, and then when they stage an event like an assault or a in-your-face, uh, in, uh, you know, extremely intensified event like somebody threatening to assault you or acting all hyper and crazy, and then maybe possibly threatening you or engaging in physical behaviors that make you feel threatened, they'll do one of these sensitization techniques. Or when they assault you or try to rob you or rob you, they will do it to make sure you mentally know it was because of gang stalking. That will be done to cycle. Uh, and when they stage events, they might even call the cops themselves by staging a witness. You would not believe, uh, staged events and gang stalking are called street theaters. You would not believe what I know. Now, was this also done in, in reference to creating the entrance down up in here and then coming up in here to intentionally uh, let me hear them and then getting out of here really fast? Was that done to psychologically motivate me to make a tweet? I already know they packed into my Twitter account, my phone's hacked and everything. They're sending me text messages regurgitating what I'm tweeting on Twitter. Literally. Literally, how'd they get my phone number? Now, they get the syndicated probate control by claiming a target cannot take care of themselves because they're homeless and that they're mentally ill because they claim they're being stalked by people they don't know, even though they factually are. That's why I said research those YouTube videos. The point being is that when they stage an event out and about in the community, they'll either psycho the, the, the event can be so bad where the target will be psychologically motivated to call the police or one of them or their or staged witnesses will. And then the syndicated cops waiting for the 911 call because they know this event is staged and he comes out base the target to talk uh say what's going on here why don't you tell me what this is all about now yeah. and that's done so the target will have to relive the experience in their mind because remember how i talked about they keep you in a constant neural mental loop intentionally and then they'll say well that sounds crazy are you mentally ill have you ever received psychiatric uh treatment are you bipolar Somebody's just been assaulted in a huge way. Do you really honestly think they're not going to be a little animated or hyper when the police finally arrive? Of course they are. Wouldn't you? 
Wouldn't you be upset? See, what these assholes do is they gaslight you as they're in your presence. And gaslighting means where they're trying to undermine your perceptions about and your reactions to what's happening to you by saying, you're acting crazy, you're acting weird, are you all right? When you're mad about something that anybody and everybody would be mad about, you just being assaulted or robbed or whatever or screwed around with, okay? After you've already left three environments where you've been mentally harassed. This is what they count on. Now, the police answered a call because it's been a state, it's a staged event. He's waiting to answer the 911 call, including fire department EMS. You wouldn't believe how corrupt the fire department is. The point being is that the whole goal to get the syndicated probate control, they need the police reports, the incident reports, and the reports about the target's homelessness. And they need to get them over a long period of time so they can claim the target's got a long history of mental illness in order to make it legally justified on paper and to even an uncorrupted judge. So take what I state and research what I'm stating. All right, I gotta go. This is gonna go into, this is either gonna go into a new YouTube account or this is gonna go into an older one and it's gonna be made private. At least I think it will be. I'm not totally sure yet. I have made it in my mind. I gotta think about it. All right, so research what I say. I make this video because I want you to see what I'm going through. And as a result, you can see what's happening to hundreds. Right now, there's an estimated anywhere between prob I people on that this 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 uh, crime has been covered on national radio shows, national TV shows, local news broadcasts. Go to YouTube and type in "gang stalking bullying on steroids." <laughs> I made so many videos. This shit's coming out without even conscious forethought, as far as my statements go. The point being is that this is how I gotta fucking live every day. Please excuse my language. I don't swear, because I'm a practicing Christian woman. I've even said prayers lately about God help me with, you know, help me not to swear. And trust me, I don't swear out in public. I don't. I'm not gonna let these fuckers, I'm not gonna let these idiots provoke me. And we're gonna see if anything happens today. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm on a tape recorder right now. <laughs> right now. <laughs> Do you see it? The point being is that these little sick, twisted, criminal fucks will even play out around you what you talk about in the privacy of your own home earlier that day. And if you don't believe me, go to Google and type in the direct conversation method. I got a phone on me right now. They can use my phone as a GPS tracker. They can use it as a listening device, and they can use it as a camera. Absolutely. And if you don't believe me, go to YouTube and type in stalking, okay, and cell phone hacking. And look for that video. It should come up on the first web page that comes up after after you hit enter when you type that in of two women being covered on a morning show every single syllable that comes out of their mouth are literal literal they're gang stalking victims and they don't even know it okay literally and i'm going to tell you something right now every single seasoned educated targeted experienced targeted individual that's out there knows that those women are telling the truth the direct conversation method is being used how their phone is the people that are hacking into their phone are, are listening to what is going on in those two women's families' homes and then sending them uh, electronic voice messages to regurgitate what was observed. That's the direct conversation method. Now, do you also, now, the only way they can do that is by using the phone as a microphone. My phone's on me right now. They can hear what I'm stating. I leave this area and then they prop it up an event that parrots and mirrors, which means it'll be the same exact theme of what I talked about in this video. It's done to intend intentionally mentally let you know your privacy is being invaded, that you're being observed by playing out a street theater. Street theaters are staged events where they play out physical and verbal theatrics towards you in order to produce mental duress, mental exhaustion. You would not believe what I know. You just would not believe it. And every single bit of it is protected by the police. And you better believe the police are involved as well. SDSD, San Diego Sheriff's Department. SDPD, San Diego Sh Police Department. Absolutely. I'm not saying all of them. Okay, because even police officers can be targeted. And I'm not saying all firefighters are, are, are targets of uh, perpetrators of this crime. I'm sure there's some good, decent ones out there. So don't misunderstand me, okay? All right, so the point being is, my name is Leslie Williams. <laughs> I'm being case. <laughs> in La Jolla and uh, I make these videos to inform to expose the truth and to expose every single details deconstructing it baby is what I'm doing I'm deconstructing their structured criminalities how they operate what they do who they are when they can be identified places employment descriptions okay and I predict what these little filthy red ass whores will do I have a feeling they came up down up in here created that area for, to, to get the, for them to get in and get out so they could hurry up and get in and get out, but they wanted me to hear them. Why? To possibly psychologically motivate me to make a tweet? 
How about it? That way the police and the judges and the prosecutors and the probate attorneys can say, Miss Williams has put herself in a, in a dangerous situation and she won't get out of it. <clears throat> and in closing, listen to me. The San Diego government, okay, you know what they've done? Okay, because the, the government's making huge money by seizing, people, uh, seizing people's assets. When they put an elderly person in a syndicated-run group home, they take legal probate control of all their finances, the equity in their mortgage. Understand. Okay? Now, the only way that they can claim that a person is mentally ill, okay, is to bait them to talk about all of what happened when a staged event occurs. Now, the target is already so mentally drained and exhausted by the time the event occurs and because of the duress of the event, uh, uh, the um, event, they know that the target's going to probably open up about it. And, oh, I'm not even going to go there. I was going to go there, but trust me on that. Just trust me. If I would have went there, you totally understand. The point being is that they're doing this to make money. Straw people. They're tearing down people's lives and taking every single thing they got, including their bodies. If they're women, okay, these human trafficking groups, they got homosexuals in them. And I'm not making these statements because I got anything against homosexuals. I'm not at all. What I'm trying to say is that human trafficking rings have homosexuals in them and heterosexuals in them. And they also are connected to pedophile rings. Voyeurism, pornography, every single type of crime you can think of these filthy rats are involved in. Curtis Webb, San Diego DA's office, Google his skanky ass, okay, and cross reference into gang stalking. And I already know that's why they're escalating shit against me, because I'm exposing his criminal ass. Look, when you've been backed into a corner, do you really honestly think that anybody's not going to fight back and say, I live, in, I live in hell every day because of these filthy right ass whores and all the propped up shit that they do in order to make a target feel paranoid that they're going to get assaulted or arrested for being homeless. This is how Target's got to live. So as, I, as far as I'm concerned, Curtis Webb, fuck you. Lick my fucking balls. All right, I got to go. And everybody else, <laughs> please excuse my language. <laughs> please, because I don't normally talk like this. But So just Google my statements, and you'll see I'm telling you the truth. If you had to, if you had to live like this, wouldn't you swear? All right, I got to go. Thanks for listening, and have a nice day. <laughs>